My name is Alistair Miller, and as a photographer, I'm normally behind the camera. But in this series, with Viking, I'm exploring the Maltese archipelago, Sicily, and Naples. Today I'm in Sicily where I'm learning about Europe's largest active volcano before sampling wine produced in a local vineyard. Ah, Sicily, one of those places that just seems to have everything. The history, the culture, the delicious food and wine, and overlooking it all, one of the world's most active volcanoes. So here we are in Sicily, yeah. and I'm with my friend Dalila, and we are in the foothills, or on the foothills of the volcano of Etna, where you yeah. grew up. Exactly. I, I was born here at the bottom of Mount Etna in Catania and I've always lived my whole life uh, in the shadow of our mother Etna because that's how we call it, you know, like inhabitants of uh, Etna because that's how we say, we say we are Etna people, uh, we call Etna Mamma. So you call mama, Etna Mamma? Yeah, we, we call it Etna. Mamma Etna, so mm -hmm. Mother Etna. Uh, because we like to say that Etna is, um, it's like a mother, you know, it's a very fertile like a mother. Uh, she gives us so many beautiful things, beautiful landscape. Sometimes she gets a little angry, you know, like a mother, but um, we love it. Like we, people that live at the bottom of Etna, they never feel afraid of living here. Because, you know, imagine that there are one, one and a half million people living uh, all around Mount Etna and they are not afraid of living here. Uh, they love Etna. We have a very, very, uh, very, beautiful connection with the mountain and so yeah uh, we are at the bottom of Mount Etna. Well you were talking about how sometimes Etna gets a little angry yeah and we're standing right next to a lava stream yeah a lava stream that came from 2002, 2002? did you tell me yes and it's I mean I'm really impressed with it it's just huge yes so what would this have been what would have happened what would have been like one day do you, I mean, do you remember when this was created? I, I remember. I was I was really young, but I do remember because there was a there was an earthquake actually just before the lava stream was mm -hmm. happening. And I remember I was in school. I was in elementary school. Mm -hmm. And you know, um, when we are in elementary school, we um, we get teach how to uh, evacuate. From mm -hmm. school. Oh, really? From buildings. Yes, you okay. learn that in first grade. Mm -hmm. You learn how to evacuate from buildings. Um, and I do remember that we, I was, you know, like a little unused to do that. Uh, we were brought out to class. And then I remember all of the ashes falling down. Because when there is an eruption of Mount Etna, there is like so much sand that comes out, the ashes, and they fall all down. They go very far away with the wind and they fall down like a black rain. So these ashes that like completely <laughs> covers the cities, the balconies, the cars, everything gets covered in black ashes. And sometimes it's a little bit annoying. So, um, so what were you afraid? I, um, I don't think I was afraid. You don't remember being no, afraid? No, no, I don't. Maybe excited. Yeah, mm. excited. When you're a kid and you think of a volcano erupting, you are excited. Mm. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I, I then remember seeing it from my house because you know, since I, from my house, I, I see very well the whole volcano, the whole mountain, and you can see the, the lava stream going down. So um, this actually started erupting at a height of 2,000 meters, uh, and the whole height of Etna is more than 3,000 meters. So, and, and it's the highest volcano in Europe? Yeah, highest active volcano in Europe. Um, so yeah, it I mean, went what... down for seven kilometers. So can you imagine like a seven kilometers lava stream going down and you know like going quite slowly fortunately like luckily it was going very slowly and it went uh, 
town. Like I can show you actually. Mm -hmm. I have a map mm -hmm. of the lava stream. It's away. It's, Sorry, yeah. <laughs> that makes more sense. Um, we are now here mm -hmm. at the bottom, at the end of the lava stream. Mm -hmm. And this is where it started. So this is, these are the craters. You, as you can see, it's a line of craters. And um, it went, like there are many craters that open on the same line. And it, at the height of 2000, it started to go down for seven kilometers. It destroyed it. Piano Provenzana is like a touristical site with some souvenir shops and the building. And just destroyed it. It got buried. I mean, didn't what he die it, in, this, in this? No, 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 no. no. Nobody, nobody was died. Injured, nobody, nobody died. died. Okay, no. Yeah. Uh, but the buildings got Thank destroyed. Goodness. Yeah. And also some part of the roads got damaged. Like they got covered basically in, in lava. Um, you know why nobody died? Because we are really lucky that lava of Etna it's rich in silica. Mm -hmm. And silica makes the consistency of lava really thick, okay. so it flows very slowly. So people have the time to evacuate, you know, to go away. So it's just crawling down. Yes, the it was crawling down exactly. And you know, it looks like, um, and it sounds like <laughs> silica is the same material of glass. Mm -hmm. So when it crawls down, mm -hmm. it sounds like breaking, like a glass that it's breaking, like broken glass. And do people come and? Yeah, Watch and see, this, it. see yeah, it, of yeah. course, yes, they can come closer and I mean only when we, they are far away from the crater because otherwise it would be It's too hot. Yeah, too dangerous. Too well. dangerous, yeah. Um, they can get closer to the lava stream and they can look at it and they can see a little bit of the steam and they feel the heat and it goes slowly, slowly down. That's, uh, that's I just can't imagine yeah, what that's like. You, you, really, I mean, looking at this, it's just this. Yeah. It's just. I mean, it almost feels like some prehistoric kind of yeah. animal. You know, it's just extraordinary. This lava flow is very fertile yes, material, is. isn't it? Yeah. And I'm impressed how quickly things start to grow back here. Yeah, there are so many plants that are starting to grow back. Uh, we can see some little oak trees, some pine trees at some point. Um, actually. Um, I want you to guess, um, look at this plant, I want you to guess what uh, this plant is. You want me to guess what this yeah, is? You, you have to smell it. I know this smell. You know the smell? It smells like my kitchen in home. Oh! It's oregano. Yes! Yes, I got you it. You got it, yes. <laughs> it's oregano, it's fresh wild oregano. Wild oregano, It's Wonderful. wild and it's growing here, like spontaneously growing here. Um, it, it takes... Like, there is not a specific time when plants start to grow back on lava streams. Um, so it depends on the acidity of the soil, on the height where we are. Uh, but already, you think after 20 years, we have some small trees that are starting to grow back. So maybe, you know, in 50 or 100 years, it will be greener. So it'll be green like the... the yeah, maybe like, uh, like our surroundings, yeah. Dalila, this seems like a pretty good way to experience Mount Etna in a 4x4 and yeah. these little tracks. Yeah, I personally think that uh, going off-road, it's the best way to really see places that are otherwise unreachable. Yeah. So you can like really see some places that are not really common to see with uh, other ways, you know. Because you would never get a coach up here. <laughs> I don't really think so. Unless you had a 4x4 four four coach. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just walking or... Uh, with walking the, with would be beautiful. It's a lovely wood. It's a lovely, yeah, it's lovely and wood. And what kind of trees are these? Um, these are mainly chestnut trees. There are many oak trees as well, some pine trees, but mainly chestnut trees. And they are actually, you know, the only trees that uh, people are allowed to cut, like forest guards are allowed to cut. Mm -hmm. um, because on Edna there is a regional park and um, the, the trees and the vegetation is protected, so mm -hmm. you're not allowed to cut the, the trees. But the chestnuts are the only trees that, pe that the forest guards are allowed to cut because they still use the chestnut wood for, um, to make doors, build doors, uh, furniture in the houses, um, it's, yeah, or wine barrels as well mm -hmm. in chestnut trees. So, yeah. And mushrooms? Do they go? Do you grow mushrooms here? Yes. What kind we of mushrooms? We grow mushrooms. Uh, they grow like very wild, spontaneously. 
especially you find them in uh, in fall time. Mm -hmm. So um, after rain and if it's warm again, mushrooms they come up, especially porcini mushrooms. Mm. They are the ones that people look the most for. I love porcini. Um, yeah, they, they, you can make so many typical delicious Sicilian stuff with the porcini mushrooms. And um, I can tell you something, porcini mushrooms usually grow always in between a chestnut tree and an oak. So very often you can find porcini mushrooms in there. So Do you know where to find them? Yeah. Right here we have some of the very old stones that got out during the eruption of 1865 and you can see that through the you know the, the years the wind the snow the sun and you know just the oxygen they have oxidized the stone that's why so many stones look red orange because the iron inside got oxidized and it's the same thing when a piece of iron gets rusty the stones also get this orangey shade. If you look over there, do you see those black stripes? Oh, yes. That is where the 2002 eruption started. Okay. The, over there, wow. and also there, you see that black patch? Yeah. Okay, so that is the, um, the area where the craters of 2002 are. And also inside the forest, I don't know if you see, there is a tree line and there is like a gap where the trees are it. not growing. That's the lava stream from 2002. So from here, down there, down there, down there. Down and then all the way down to where we were this morning. Okay, so I brought you here because I wanted to show you this. This is a like a chimney of the crater. So basically it's like a channel that was like originally connected to the main channel of this crater. When since this crater is now extinguished, it means that it's closed, the channel as well at some point ends. It's about 10, 15 meters long. Mm -hmm. And um, we call this, in Italian, we call it hornito, hornito. which is a Spanish word that means little oven. <laughs> so we used to, yeah, we, we call this chimneys little oven because this is where all the hot air and the gases are coming out from. There is no lava passing through here, otherwise it would be closed mm -hmm. because when the lava is in the channel, it solidifies and it, it basically seals the, the mouth of the crater. Since there was no lava passing through here, this is still open and there was only hot air coming out from here. So this is why we say it's a little oven or a chimney. You would not want to fall down there though? No, no, absolutely not. Please don't. This strange, unworldly landscape, molded by nature's angry roar, has a unique beauty all of its own. The next stop on my day in Sicily 
was the Barone di Villa Grande winery, where, in the volcanic soil on the slopes of Mount Etna, the vines have flourished for almost 300 years, lovingly cultivated by 10 generations of the Nicolosi family. So, Marco, could you introduce yourself to us and tell us what you do here in the winery? Oh, yes, I'm Marco Nicolosi. I'm producer and winemaker in Villa Grande Farm. We are on the slopes of Mount Etna. We are in 700 meter site and Etna is so special for four reasons for produce wine. Because the soil is uh, created by Etna, eruption on eruption, so the soil is volcanic soil and uh, so special. The climb is uh, very unique because the sea is close and the mountain is 3,300 uh, meters high, close to the sea, so the climb is special. We have 10 times rain to the other part of the Sicily and uh, the varieties is unique varieties. Carricante for white wine and Merello Mascalese for Etna Red but also we have a long tradition for produce wine. So the soil, the climb and the varieties mix with uh, the expertise of uh, the people in Etna area produce unique type of, uh, of wine and very traditional and very recognizable wine. And how long has, uh, have, you been have you been making wine here? Oh, my family produced in this vineyard since 1727. Ooh. I'm the 10th generation, so it's big responsibility, <laughs> it's a big for, responsibility. for me. Yes. Yeah, yeah. But it's an amazing job. I'm the winemaker. I like this job. It's very creative, good responsibility. But uh, produce wine in this moment on Etna is amazing. It's fabulous. Yes. I'm, I'm just thinking with the with the sea being so close. Does that affect yeah. the, the flavor of the wine or oh. the, the saltiness of the sea that, that comes off the sea? Or the oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, it's difficult to explain about saltiness, but we have big effect from the sea because uh, we have every day, all day, the breeze from the sea. Mm -hmm. And we are in a place with a lot of rain and also depend from the sea because uh, especially during the, uh, we call it Shirocco, Southeast. The wind, uh, wind mm -hmm. close all Mediterranean Sea. It's a hot wind, take a lot of humidity from the sea. Right. When arrive against volcano, go up, meet cold air, and we have rain and rain and rain. But after the rain, every time the breeze help us to dry the humidity around the grapes. So it's perfect condition for produce. In Milo town, a special white wine. Only in Milo town, we are in Milo. It's possible to produce Etna white wine superiore. So it's all white wines? Uh, the superior is only for the white, okay. yes, only in Milo area. Yeah. And what, what kind of capacity of production are we talking here? How many, how many bottles roughly would you produce? Uh, the, the farm is 24 hectares uh, and That's we... All this here? Yeah. 24 hectares in vineyards, yeah. It's around here, we have another property in Nicolosi, small, small vintage in Salina, in Salina Island, in northeast of the Sicily. Mm -hmm. And the production is about 100,000 bottles per year. Right. And do you export a lot of wine? Oh, yes. We export in 22 countries, a small quantity in every country. And uh, yes, but our first market is Sicily in Sicily because uh, all good restaurant and wine store, wine shop know our brand and uh, Etnera, so it's our first market, yes. So uh, Marco, we are just, we're very close to Mount Etna. Oh. We're just underneath the volcano. Yeah. And you have a wine called Etna. Yeah. Can we try it? Yes, okay. absolutely. And maybe you can tell me, describe to me the, 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 the kind of flavors that um, Oh, that it's interesting in because Etna is uh, not intense, intense and aromatic varieties, but it's very large. It's possible to identify many descriptors of aroma. Uh, fresh floral, some citrus, uh, and uh, every year is different to do each other, because sometimes we have uh, too much rain in September 
and so the flavor is more vegetable and not uh, uh, fruity. Uh, sometimes we have hot sun and we have uh, less uh, vegetable and more fruity. So it depends uh, really from uh, age by age, vintage by vintage, yes. 2020 is very representative. I like for white wine is really interesting because it's uh, fresh and we have a, a it's a representative, we have good balance of every different descriptor of aroma. So start with uh, something um, dry vegetable and uh, I like also chamomilla taste because it's floral and vegetable but it's a uh, little bit aromatic. I can, I can tell you're very passionate about your, your oh, wine. Oh <laughs> yes, I love uh, the wine, I love uh, produce wine, I love drink wine and also talking about wine. <laughs> I like it. Mm. Oh, I really well, like it. Thank you. <laughs> and I don't normally drink dry white wines, but uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I like this one very much. Can we have a look at the, just talk about the vineyards a little oh, bit? Oh, please, yes. Um, yeah. I mean, it's very beautiful. Are, are the grapes, they're all picked by machine, I imagine, are they? Absolutely or do you hand? by hand. By hand? Everything, all operation is by hand. We have high density uh, vineyard, vines in, uh, in the vineyard. Uh, we have 7,000 vines per each hectare, it's high density. Uh, so it's possible to uh, work only by hand. All, only for the soil we have a small tractor, but just for the soil. Every, every operation is by hand, especially the harvest. Yes. And the people who come and pick the wine, are they local people or are they people yes, from a, the local, uh, people. They're local people? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but on Etna, Everyone know in the harvest time we go in the vineyard for the harvest. I mean, they're very beautiful, very beautiful. That's lovely, Marco. Thank you so much. Oh, it was I a enjoyed pleasure. tasting the wine, <laughs> and um, thank you for explaining it. And yeah, it's uh, so your your you told me it goes back how many generations? Seven. I'm the Eight. tenth. Your te tenth generation. Yeah. Okay. And you're, so you grew up yeah. knowing I'm, about wine and yeah. tasting wine and almost yeah. as a child? You, you, you I have a little, child, you, uh, did Tommaso, you? Tommaso, nine years old. I don't know if he wants to remain in the farm. Yes, maybe, I hope, but... It's a big pressure. It, <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> to no. To say no, no. it's not so Tommaso easy. Tommaso is free. He can choose everything. Whatever he wants. Yeah. You'll be happy. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay. Absolutely, yes. Maybe we should have another one just to make sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm case. interested. Tommaso is free and happy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's right. You're a good dad. Yeah. Good <laughs> Thank <luck>. you. <laughs> Grazie. Thank you so much. Grazie. It's lovely. Grazie Thank, you. Thank you for letting us come and see you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. As the ship slipped her mooring lines and we pointed our bow towards our next port of call, I reflected on how nature gives and takes, how the massive and destructive forces of an erupting volcano create a soil from which fine wines can be produced. Simply put, Sicily just wouldn't be Sicily without the giving and the taking of Mother Etna. Next time, I explore Naples and taste true Italian pizza, followed by a tour of the vast archaeological site of Pompeii.